Welcome. I'm so glad you joined us for worship today. When you come through these doors, you will hear a verse from Scripture that is so familiar, whether you're attending a baseball game or a football game or attending worship. It is that line from John, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's John 3, 16. What is powerful about that line is the reminder that God so loved the world. So I hope that you come in here and know how much it is that God loves you. And then let us together fill our world with love. Come on in and let us celebrate God's love this day. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh God, you are my God. From break of day, I seek you. Please join me in reciting the morning psalm. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, Meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand holds me fast. O oh God, you are my God, from break of day I seek you. Would you please join me in reciting these verses of Psalm 107. I give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Let us say together Canticle 10. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle of Paul to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived. Following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many of you might recall that after Christmas, the adult faith formation class read a book entitled The Book of Joy. It was um, a book written by an author after spending five days, five glorious days, in the company of the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop Desmond Tutu. It was a great, great read. There were a number of chapters, some of which talked about the obstacles to experiencing joy, and then, and then there were eight chapters that described the pillars of joy. I remember one of the chapters regarding obstacles spoke of suffering and adversities. And my goodness, to the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop Desmond Tutu know plenty about that. Dalai Lama was 16 when he was forced to assume governmental rule and to be the spiritual leader of his people. And and then at the age of 25, I think it was, he, he fled to India for his safety and has lived in exile for over, over half a century each day wondering for his safety, each day under the the threat of uh, of assassination or violence. Can you imagine that? Archbishop Tusu's existence has been equally um, difficult. He came of age in uh, apartheid South Africa where the dangers were constant and and he has known incredible suffering and hardship himself. These two men, when they speak about suffering, they know of what they speak. And so it is that that I learned from them that one of the dangers, one of the obstacles that our suffering and and our adversities can, can present to us is that they can turn us inward, that that we can end up um, engaged in self-pity and and sort of self-absorption and and even a hardness of heart. It's understandable. It's understandable. But it's also an obstacle, an obstacle to, to joy, which goes hand in hand with one of the pillars that they talk about that is perspective, that it is perspective, in fact, which enables us to navigate our our sufferings and our adversities and still find some joy in life. You think that that the Israelites, who were the central characters in today's first lesson from the book of Numbers, I think that they would have benefited from reading the book of joy. Understand a little bit about what's going on here for these Israelites. They have been um, enduring a long, a long journey in the wilderness. 
It's not been easy. There's been plenty of suffering, to be sure, which is perhaps why scholars suggest that there are um, a series of stories that they call the five murmurings, which is kind of polite language for the five stories of, of, of groans or, or, or gripes or, or complaints. It seems that really from the moment Moses brought them out of, of Egypt, they were complaining about one thing or another, and they were, were looking at Moses, their, their reluctant leader, and saying, man, we would have been better off if we had just stayed with the Pharaoh in Egypt. They complained first about the water, that it was too bitter. And later, there were murmurings that they were hungry. In fact, fears that they were going to starve to death. Again, then, later again, they, they complained about, about water. And then a fourth murmuring was, was that, they, that they were hungry for, for meat. And, and, and every time there would be this murmuring or this, this complaining, the, the, the book tells us that, that God would be ready to punish them for their for their lack of appreciation and for their lack of, of, of faith. And Moses, Moses would go to God and plead on their behalf and, and God, would, God would have compassion on them. In fact, God would respond to their complaints. When, when they complained about the, the water being too bitter, God gave Moses um, the way to sweeten the water. When they complained about starving in the wilderness, God sent manna raining down upon them. Later, when they complained again of thirst, God gave Moses a stick and, and, and he showed Moses how to, how to hit the rock with the stick and, and water poured forth from the stone. And, and, and when they even complained because, oh, they wanted meat, God sent a mighty wind to blow upon them. And, and in that wind, there were, there were birds and fowl for their meat. It's amazing how they would complain time and time and time again. And in part because of Moses' pleas, but more because of God's patience, God would tend to their complaints. Which brings us to today. And the fifth and final of the, the murmuring stories, the last time, apparently, they would complain. And this, this time, it's a little bit different. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, they asked. There is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Okay, all of that might have been a similar refrain, but this is directed not just at, at Moses, at God too. It seems that they are condemning not only Moses, but God. And, and God, the Lord may be patient, but, but God's heard enough. That they, would, that they would renounce God like this? Well, that is, that, that, that is over the line, I would guess, or so it seems in the moment, because God sends snakes, sends snakes to descend upon the, the Israelites and they are, they are bitten and, and, and they are dying. And, and, and then the story goes that the Israelites, they come to their senses or, or maybe they just are, are terrified by the snakes because again, they go to Moses, having realized their sins. And they say, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. And here's, here's the part of the story that just amazes me. Moses, Moses does just that. Moses goes to the Lord and again makes pleas to the Lord and again, the Lord responds to their suffering. The, the Lord says to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. 
And if you remember the end of the story, it goes like this. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Look, I I get the, the suffering and the hardships of these Israelites. There's no denying. But there's also no mistaking God's patience, God's God's mercy, God's love, and God's grace. Every time they murmur or grumble or complain, even when they when they challenge and even when they renounce Moses and God, God finds the mercy to care for them, to meet them in their suffering, and and to provide them a way for life. What an amazing thing. Uh, there, there are two ways to read this story and the stories of their murmurings. One is to, is to focus on their sufferings and the adversities that they faced and to think, my goodness, what hardships, this long journey in the wilderness and and, and, and how was it that they suffered so? And how could anyone expect to survive something like that? Surely that's a, a line that goes through the stories. But the other line that is equally present in all the murmurings before and this story as well is that God journeys with them. That God does not, does not abandon them. That God does not judge them and sever God's grace from them. Instead, God meets them in their pain. Instead, God remembers the covenant that he established with with their ancestors. Instead, God continues to love them through it all. That's true, that that balance between suffering and, and grace. That's true throughout all the Hebrew scriptures. It's true all the way through that last and climatic sign of God's desperate love for us. Where John writes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. After all of this, God so loved the world. It's good perspective to keep in mind, is it not? Here we are, just up to the the midway point of Lent. And and without a doubt, this is a a season to to reflect upon our own own actions, our own attitudes to maybe even consider, gee, have we been grumbling and complaining? Complaining? <laughs> Have we been writing our own stories of murmurings? I don't know about you, but that's true of me from time to time. It's important to do this inventory during the time of Lent, to be sure. But I want to say this, even as we do this inventory, don't ever lose sight of God's patience and God's love and God's grace. If you're feeling feeling lost and lonely, don't forget about God's love and grace. If you're feeling hurt and hungry, don't forget about God's love and grace. And and if if you're feeling numb or nothing, especially then, don't forget about God's love and grace. Our faith stories are filled with examples of people who are feeling all those things. But they are filled with even more spectacular examples of how God's love and grace is steadfast for us. If we can just keep sight of it all. It is perspective which is so important 
to help us make our way through this season of Lent. It was keeping in perspective God's love and grace that, that, that frankly brought water and manna for the Israelites who, who, who hungered and thirsted in the, in the wilderness. It is the perspective of God's love and, and grace that, that can help us as we journey through whatever seasons of wilderness we might endure. And as the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop remind us, it is the perspective of knowing God's love and grace that can even, that can even help us find joy in the midst of our sufferings and adversity. Amen. Let us together profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop Nicholas, for all the clergy and people, and for Episcopal charities and the ministries and agencies the fund supports, Lord, have mercy. For our President Joseph, for our Governor Daniel, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, for those who are afflicted with COVID-19, and for all of those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Matthew P. Logan, Kathy Denny Brown, Candy Weeks Reed, and the Macaruso family, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, we pray especially for Bob Richard and his family and friends in their time of grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, and for those who serve in our armed forces, especially Joey Barden, David Ryan H., Jordan Werner, Zachariah Hoytich, Jack Norris, Charlie Babb, Andrew Mettler, Trav DeGroote, Doug, Scott Marcus, Jordan Jimenez, Chris Peters, Anatoly Impagliazzo, Jason Eaton, Kyle Talbot, Chris Dwyer, Austin Jackson, Steve Maiozzi, Danny Hayden, Gregory Durant, and Chip Barton. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son Jesus Christ came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Again, I want to thank you for joining us for worship today and a particular welcome if you have found us online for the very first time. I hope that you've printed out the entirety of our Sunday bulletin because in the back pages, there are a number of announcements about life here at St. Luke's. They include some of the usual ones. We continue our Lenten blog. We're still looking for a few more writers there, by the way. We also continue our Wednesday evening adult faith formation study that happens at 7 p.m. Our Thursday evening kids compliment that happens at 7 p.m. But then you'll also see some other announcements. There's a quarterly report regarding our finances here at St. Luke's. Let me thank all of you who have contributed to the life and ministry thus far. We are so grateful for your pledge dollars, for your contribution dollars, and it's not too late, in fact, even to pledge. Or if you'd like to make a contribution, certainly you'll find at our website a button that'll allow you to do so. We could not be who we are and what we are without your generosity. So I do thank you for that. You will also see an invitation now to share a little bit, to be a bit generous, as we might remember loved ones and provide for music and flowers on our Easter Sunday celebration. So on the back page of your Sunday bulletin, there's a form if you would like to remember a loved one um, by way of a memorial gift. Take a look at that and consider um, not only remembering a loved one, but also helping make our Easter celebration more beautiful. The final announcement is one I have been eager to make now for weeks and weeks and weeks. And that is beginning next Sunday, March 21st, we will resume in-person worship. Our two services will be as has been before at 7.45 and at 10.15. I wanna encourage you to sign up in advance by way of Sign Up Genius. We happily found ourselves really bumping up against the ceiling for maximum capacity just before we suspended in-person worship. So it's so important that you sign up in advance and that you get here at least five minutes in advance so that we can know exactly how many seats we need to save and how many seats are available for people who are discovering us for the very first time. But I am so happy to say that next Sunday we will resume worship in person here in the church at St. Luke's. Do not despair, however, if you cannot yet come to in-person worship, we will continue these online services as well. So in one way or another, I look forward to worshiping with you next week. I hope that you are moving closer and closer yourself to being vaccinated and to feeling safe during this long season of pandemic. I hope that your Lenten journey has God's hands all over it, and I hope that you feel blessed this day. Thank you for joining us, and may God bless you.